GQ interview, I think, that you know maybe you haven't yet got over the disappointment at the end of last season. Maybe it's not something that you ever will or should get over. But um, could you talk a bit maybe about the emotional journey that you've been on this summer since since the end of last season, building up now to a new dawn and fighting for the trophy tomorrow? What's that journey been like for you mentally? The first few weeks very tough because you, I didn't went through it and and the first thing you have to do is look in the mirror you know and uh, and understand okay is that something that you should have done better differently or um, and if that's the case learn from it um, and then yeah judge yourself is are you still the right person to drive uh, the club the team forward in in the way that you want and do you have that energy and and that belief that you want to do it and. I think it took a big reflection, but the answer is yes, and I feel with a lot of energy and, and positiveness, but um, I don't like losing, and uh, it takes me a while, and, um, and that was a tough moment. And when, and when, when you look at where you are placed now in pre-season, you've got so much of your, of your business done very early, mm. £200 million pounds of business, maybe there's more to come, but three very big transfers done about a month ago, maybe that's cleanness and efficiency with which Arsenal haven't always done their pre-season. Mm. Um, do you feel in a better place now or maybe than you've been in any pre-season in your managerial tenure? Every pre-season is different. It's true that as well we have certain players that they were coming from long periods out with, with long surgeries as well but um, in terms of the business that's credit to the club and, and all the processes and the people that are involved to make that happen as managers I think it's very important to have everybody as quick as possible I think as well commercially and, and um, for those players and the team in general to have the understanding of where we are going and, and have those bodies around as well is, is very helpful and I am so happy that, that we were able to do that. Now, when you reflected on last season and had those moments, what do you think the, the difference was between you and City last year and why they won the title? Momentum. I think in the key moments uh, when they, it should have gone one way and in many situations in the season it went for us. Um, it didn't go for us and it was one, two, three and then we lost momentum, they took momentum and that shifted very much. And then you're talking about a team that it needs to win 25 games in a row. They have the capacity to do that, you know. So the last thing that they need is momentum and, and belief, and uh, and we gave them that. One thing City have always had is, is that depth in their squad that they can rotate yeah. players and bring in players of the same quality. Maybe not something you've had until now, really, mm. when you look at the squad you've built. Is that something you've been deliberately trying to put together now, to have two players per position ready to compete? Yeah, obviously, we knew that, that that was a factor, but I think... Um, it is a factor and, and he could have played a, or he did play a part in certain moments with a certain specific moments of players but um, I think we had games that we didn't win especially the three doors that we had with this when momentum shifted as well we should have won those games you know and we had enough to win those games and, and it was in, in our hands but uh, there were key moments where we just weren't ruthless enough or clinical enough or, or we didn't have the luck or, or we made certain mistakes that that didn't allow that happening, and, and uh, we have to recognise that as well. Thanks, Sam. Couple each time. Sorry, couple each next job. Do you think it's fair to say that Manchester City have come to the end of their cycle? They've won the Champions League, which was what they always wanted to do, whereas you've got everything right in front of you. Is that an advantage? For you? I heard that a few times in the last seven years when they won four <laughs> titles or 100 points and then they went to 95. So. I don't think that's the case, and, and knowing the manager and, and the people at the club, I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, you just mentioned Declan Rice playing winger and attacking midfield. Has he been played out of position all, all, all his life? And sorry, sorry? Declan Rice, has he been played out of position? Have you, you've obviously seen him as something he hasn't played. No. As I said before, make sure that we play him in the strengths and, and, uh, and we don't especially drive him crazy. He has two positions mainly that he's, I think, he's played there and he's very comfortable there, especially in certain spaces when he plays more of the left. But, um, yeah, we will stick to that. You, you spoke about how difficult it was to get over the disappointment. What were you like in the first couple of weeks? Could you stop thinking about it or did you go away with your family or whatever family? Probably I pretend that I stopped thinking as my wife, but probably she would say something very different. Uh, you need to go over it, you know, and uh, being away, I think it helps quite a lot. Um, and it's, it's the feeling when you have created that, uh, that belief and, and you have the feeling that you can do it and, and then it goes away. But um, it's part of it. And I think we all need that, you know, to be better. And, 
and that moment when you feel okay I failed or, or I didn't achieve what I wanted you still have the hunger and, and the desire to go again and, and that's a, a big motivation as well. Could you actually switch up or were you all constantly thinking oh think about signings, think about on the phone and all that sort of thing? Yeah, I think it's always there and every day you get uh, messages. We have a lot of people at the club and, and there's always things happening and, and you have to be on top of that. And, you know, that period is is key. But I had some rest as well and I needed some rest. But uh, I think it's a really good... When you get especially good news, it's a good, uh, good way to put the temperature down because you are more confident that things are moving in the right direction. I think this summer we had uh, a lot of those good news. John, can you turn that panel, Uh, football does tend to go in cycles, Michael, and you've known this club for a long time. Um, because there were some fairly dark years before you took over, but I think last season it was seen as a bit that you'd overachieved in challenging for the title so quickly. <coughs> but now you've got a, the age of the squad and with off the field, the, the, the way the club's put together, you know, what you're doing. Do you feel Arsenal are now in a position where they're starting another cycle? where they'll be considered one of the top clubs in the country for a number of years? I understand uh, about that concept of cycles, but as a manager, the cycle that you look is at the 24-hour cycle. And a lot of things happen in 24 hours and make sure that you are the best in that cycle. And then the following 24 and 24, uh, and that's the only thing that, that I look. Certainly there are plans and objectives and, and feelings that we have where we want to go, but I think after it has to be shown and, and delivered every single day.